So we're hugely grateful to Shell for making this conversation possible. And so I'm happy to welcome to the Axios stage, Shell's Senior Vice President of US Chemicals and Products, Emma Lewis. Emma, welcome to Axios. How are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's start big picture here. Uh, the U.S. Gulf Coast, Louisiana, mm -hmm. so important to the energy community, so important to Shell. Talk to a little bit about uh, about how why this region is so important to Shell and why we're having this conversation today. Yeah. So I think just a couple of things to touch on. So Shell has been in Louisiana for over ninety five years. Um, we have a significant number of facilities, a significant number of employees, retirees, um, and a huge amount of our business is, is based here. So if you kind of um, looked at all the various countries that we operate in and you took Louisiana, it would actually be like the, four, the fourth largest country if right. it, um, it were a country. Just on its so, own. Very, very important to us, yeah. So with that kind of presence in a community like this, talk a little bit about how you see your role in the community. Yeah, so I think our role in the community, um, I think it's changing. So um, I think, look, the, the first thing is um, around providing employment. Um, and I think um, in the past that our, um, our assets in particular, we haven't always had great representation of the communities around the fence line. And we're working really hard to, to, to change that. Um, I also think if you look at programs like our Livewire program, that's really about taking um, entrepreneurs from sort of underrepresented parts of the community mm -hmm. and trying to help them to develop businesses, not just around our assets, but um, also independently from our assets. I think in the past we have talked a lot at our communities um, versus engaging them in dialogue. Um, I think we've also tended to sometimes listen to voices that were supportive of us only. And so, you know, personally for me, I think it's important that we're able to engage with all the voices in our community. Um, and, and that's something that we're trying to it's do It's a little bit of, of what this is, sort mm -hmm. of being in the community, inviting people yep. and like stick around afterwards and maybe yep, hear what folks exactly. have to say about yep. it. Well, it's interesting you mentioned, uh, this is a, an interesting phrasing sort of energy community, like communities around the fence line. I know yeah. diversity, equity, inclusion is a big part of your leadership. Unpack a little bit more how you view that at yep. Shell and why it's important. So I think it's important for, for Shell as a whole, but maybe just let me touch on, um, on why it's important to me. So um, I'm gonna date myself, but I think I graduated in 1999. Um, that was a good I, year. Yeah, it was a good year. Um, I was, um, I come from, you can probably tell it's not a Louisiana or a Texas accent. I come from the Northeast of England. I come from a community that was very heavy in industry. So a lot of steel, a lot of coal, a lot of that went to China incredibly high unemployment rates. So I have four brothers and none of us live um, anywhere near my parents. Mm -hmm. um, when I hired in, I was one of a very small number of women um, in the asset that I was in. I'd say there were even fewer, um, fewer minorities that were represented in the sites. And I think, you know, when you only have one kind of type of person in a site, you, you, you don't have that diversity of thought. You don't have that diversity of experience. And so it's really important to me um, that we get as many different people um, represented in our sites in terms of experience, thought, background. It just helps us make better decisions, have better ideas. Um, we're not perfect, but it's, um, right. it's something that we work really hard at. It sounds like it's not, it's not academic to you. You've seen no. it where you grew yeah. up and what those uh, industrial companies went through. Yeah. And so you're hopefully correct it now. It was the driving five miles to go to the bathroom because there was no women's toilets and running around in men's overalls. And um, yeah, it was, um, it's changed a lot. And like I said, it's still not there, but it's something that we're really working hard to change. Uh, we're in the midst of a massive energy transition, mm -hmm. like the United States and around the world. Talk to me a little bit about like your goals in that, how you view Shell's role yeah. in it. Yeah, so I think it's a really, interesting time in the in the industry and i think all of us at certain points go this is the the critical pivotal moment in our industry but um it's a very difficult balancing act um we need to make sure that we supply there's a secure energy supply today right so that means um doing things like continuing with projects in the in the gulf of mexico so that we're able to continue to supply the energy that people need today 
but it also means looking at ways to provide bio-based products, circular products, and by that I mean products made from things like waste plastic, mm -hmm. um, low carbon um, intense products, and, and all of those different things are needed um, in different end uses and different customers want different things. Trying to balance all of those, um, it's quite challenging, right? But I'm really proud of the, um, the progress that we're making. Um, so just to give you a couple of examples, so last year we signed a deal with Henkel. Um, we're gonna be supplying bio-based surfactants um, in, in their products. We also did a deal with, um, with Bridgestone where we're taking um, hard to recycle waste plastics and we're using those to make um, tires. Um, we ran those in the Indy 500 last year. If they can mm -hmm. work in the Indy 500, I'm pretty sure they car, can work probably. online in your car. Um, and so, you know, we're progressing a lot of things like that. Um, and it's how do you juggle all those balls at the, the same time, right? So I think what I really view our role as is, you know, to keep making sure that we, we supply secure energy, but that we do it with, with fewer emissions. Um, and so, so that's the journey that we're, we're on. Um, hitting the right rate and pace on that is, is quite challenging, right. but that's something that we all work on every day. It sounds like the key word in all of this is the transition, is mm -hmm. that there are existing things which yep. can't go off tomorrow as a flip right. of the switch. And as we move to that, it's about balancing that demand because right. the lights can't go off. Exactly. I mean, the lights can't go off. People still want to drive their cars. They want to run their AC, all of those things. So it is about how you provide that security of supply, but at the same time, bring in these new, you know, bio, circular, recycled, lower carbon intensity um, products. And that's really what, uh, what all of us at Shell are, are working on. Yeah, uh, I thought it was interesting, we mentioned earlier that Shell has literally been here for almost a century, mm -hmm. uh, which you kind of forget. Spin this forward, what is it gonna look like 100 years from now? Or maybe not the full 100 years, what do the next 100 years look like? I take for Shell what the region. next 10 years are gonna look like right now. Um, so I think, look, we're on this, we're on this journey. Um, I can tell you what I hope um, yeah. it looks like is, is maybe an easier question to, to answer. Um, you know, like I really hope, one thing I'm really proud of is we're able to take these assets um, that are almost 100 years old and actually pivot them into being lower emissions, um, you know, uh, cleaner, um, cleaner assets. So I really hope that, you know, we've gotten our assets to net zero. Um, we've continued to build on the, um, the relationship with the communities around the fence line. They're more transparent, they're more collaborative. Um, and that, you know, really we're, we're able to provide the products with much fewer emissions than we, we do today. And the interesting thing is that uh, a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the people from the last hundred years will be able to continue and tribute to the next hundred years. Yeah, and I mean, look, um, you know, I think the, the, the beauty of some of what we've been able to do is we're actually using our existing equipment to make these, these circular and these bio-based products. Um, which means that you know all all of our people are able to continue in the in the roles that they're in, yeah. um, which is important, right? Uh, at Axios, we love to end on one fun thing. So before we get the hook here, I want to end on one fun thing. You're in town from Houston. Mm -hmm. Before you go back to Texas, what's the one thing you're going to do in Louisiana? What's the one thing you got to eat on your way back to the yeah. airport? So I have a bit of a weakness for for chocolate stuffed beignets. I have to say they're pretty they're pretty good. Um, the first time I ever came here um, in this role, because I've been coming here for a long time, for about 20 years, um, I actually judged a gumbo, um, a gumbo competition, and I completely underestimated the number of bowls of gumbo that I was going to have to you eat. You judged it. I did. And so I hit about bowl number 20. I was in quite a tight pair of pants. And I'd, let's just say I did not feel great that afternoon. So okay. maybe a few less bowls of, uh, of gumbo than the last time I was here, but definitely looking for the chocolate You're, beignet. It's still breakfast. You have time to get the chocolate yep. beignet. Emma, thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you Big very much. Thanks to Shell for making this conversation possible. Stick around. It continues. Thank you. Thank you very much.